Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming here. Um, I'm Stefano from Datastacks. Today, uh, I'm going to show you a library uh, which was built with the purpose of making Cassandra uh, more easily accessible to generative AI folks, which, as you will see, uh, does not always coincide with Cassandra people. Um, so we know that Cassandra 5 is coming, packed with very good new stuff. Uh, AC transaction, SAI, vector search, vector search. So vector search, in case you don't know it, is a big thing, um, <laughs> which is basically uh, the workhorse of this generative AI revolution which is taking place. So uh, looking at the timeline, you notice that CP30, which is the Cassandra enhancement proposal introducing vector support, happened during the course of this year and was very quickly made its way to Cassandra 5, which is about to be released. And you probably know that vector search is a big deal. And it, so you know vector search probably, but just as a quick reminder, um, it is a way that, it is a search method that enables um, retrieval of basically anything, as long as you can turn it into a vector. In particular, it's very useful for retrieving pieces of text because there are now embedding methods to very cleverly make text into points in a space. And then vector search uh, basically translates the hard task of semantic similarity search into a geometric task. So if you can have a, a, a sentence and you can look for similar sentences and that has become a problem of, of geometric problem, which is great because uh, we know how to treat that. <laughs> so um, developers, uh, especially generative AI folks, there might be an overlap with people familiar with Cassandra, but you probably can imagine this overlap right now is not that big. And since Cassandra 5 is so great and it starts to pack support for all of this uh, Gen AI oriented thing, uh, I think we need a way to enhance this overlap, especially because in this picture, Cassandra and Gen AI people uh, are not drawn to scale. And they are not drawn to scale even in this picture. So generative AI practitioners is a notion of people. And if we find a way to make Cassandra more accessible, then it's a big win, right? So um, there is a concept which probably DevRel people know very well, which is the time to hello world. And today, this has to be very short. I'm speaking minutes. Many times, if, let's say, someone lands on your, on your website, on your quick start, and if in five minutes they do not see anything working yet, uh, that might be enough to make them flee to someone else, some other vector search database, and we don't want that, right? So uh, raise your hand if you feel familiar with CQL. Of course, we are at the Cassandra Summit. Uh, can you imagine how would CQL feel to someone used to a two-line of Python code? Uh, you, can, you can admit it might feel intimidating a bit. Uh, verbose, I mean, I love CQL, don't get me wrong, but we need a way to make at least the time to hello world much shorter, much easier. And this is where Casayo enters the picture. Um, we want to make using Cassandra easy and quick for folks who don't have time to learn the ways of CQL, but still they want to exploit the, the, the various very awesome uh, technologies that are behind Cassandra and its vector search support. So um, let me show you a quick start. I'm sure you have seen plenty of RAG quick starts, and this is no exception. Actually, this is two quick starts in one. So let me jump to, okay, I have a notebook, by the way, uh, sorry. You will see there is a, a link here. You can run it yourself, either with a, a Docker, Cassandra 5, beta uh, image, or with 
data sucks AstraDB if you don't want to uh, get involved with the local running your database. Uh, you will find all links in here and in, in, in the presentation uh, online. So uh, this is a very standard RAG quick start. I'm not uh, here to show you how RAG works, but so I, I have already executed the setup steps, which are starting a Docker, Cassandra, checking the contact point, okay, standard stuff. So you see here, I, this is Python code, of course. Um, this is where I create a session. This is all done. I create a key space, so this is already. Now, I also set an OpenAI key for later usage. And now, uh, this is how the CASIO part works. There's one line where I set up a session for later use. Bam. Uh, we can skip the AstraDB case because today I'm running with uh, Docker. You can see it here. Uh, Docker Cassandra 5.0 Alpha 2. So I can run a CQL just in case it will not be needed here. Um, so this is where I create, well, a vector store. It's a table. It's a table directly made the right shape to serve your vector needs directly made with your indices, ready to be queried, and this is everything it takes. A bit easier, a bit more Pythonic than SQL, so. But behind the scenes, a lot of things have happened. Table creation, indices, all that. Um, then we will populate the store with a few vectors. This is a, a, a sample data set with 30 something fake uh, insect descriptions. Let's look at one of them. So there is a name, an order, and a description. Like this is a, some kind of made up butterfly. Um, so you see, this is how I put my, uh, my entry in the vector store. Uh, there is a put method that takes care of everything. It will take care of prepare statements, insertion, everything, schema, translation, pre, post processing, everything. The only thing I have to do is I uh, have to make to, to create an embedding vector. So this is not a library, this is not long chain. This is not a library that makes Genii things for you. This just makes it easier to use Cassandra as if it were uh, exactly the shape of your Genii needs. So, okay, let me run this one insertion. This is it. So we, we can maybe just for, for the fun, we can try desk tables. There is a Casio demo. Uh, let me. So you see, this is my row. I'm not showing the vector because it's very long. But this is what end, ends up in the database among other columns. Let me go back to the demo. Uh, I, can, I want to complete the insertion, so I will compute the remaining embeddings. And still with this uh, Casio abstraction, uh, run the insertion concurrently to save some time. So that's it. Now, how do you do search? Again, you don't have to deal with the SQL full syntax for vector search, which I'll, I'm going to show you later. Uh, you see, again, this cell is what, where the vector search is run, but the vector search is this line. So it's exactly a method built in Casio, exactly with the shape that you need. So you have a vector, a number of entries and possibly a metric to measure similarities. And there we go. So I started with a sentence describing some kind of dragonfly. I make it into a vector because that's where, that's what I need for running the search. And there we go with the results or assorted by similarity score. Um, I can do something more. I can, uh, I can run some metadata filters because uh, the, the, the appropriate indexes have been built for me by the Casio table creation. So we are only about, this is only about bugs. And there we go, Coleoptera, Coleoptera, Coleoptera. Again, results. Uh, okay, so the last part of this demo is the full rug thing. So it's not only retrieval, R, we also want to do AG, so full rug. And in this case, uh, I don't, I think we, are, we have seen so many of these chat with your docs things. Okay, so this is a bit different just for the fun of it. This is a field assistant bot. Uh, imagine you are an uh, amateur entomologist, you, saw some, you spot some insect in the field, and uh, 
we use rags to retrieve entries from this fake textbook about biology, and we help the entomologist with identification of the species. So we have a prompt which says, you are an expert entomologist assistant, so and so, and then we will stuff this prompt with the observation by the user and the candidate found by the retrieval, just for the fun of it. So I have a function here, suggest observed species, and you see it's basically uh, doing a vector search then to, to find the relevant matches uh, according to the observation, then it, it uh, uh, formats the prompt template with observation and matches. And then it will ask an LLM to uh, come up with a final identification and degree of accuracy. So this is how it works. I just call suggest observed species with some description. It will, of course, here you see it takes some time, but that's the LLM interaction that takes some time because the retrieval is very fast. And uh, you see after a bit of uh, uh, text, there is a, the why and the how uh, this observation matches this insect with a moderate degree of certainty. So this is basically it. Um, of course, again, I can run it again with a different remark and I can also run in debug mode and you will see how the prompt is created. That's of course not specific to Casayo, but it might be fun to see. So this is the, the actual prompt that is then sent to the LLM and the answer is again, based on your observation because of this and that, this is uh, you, the insect you saw. Uh, so that's, that's it. There's nothing specific to Cassandra here in the rug part, but that, that was to, to give you the sense of how you get all the way to a, a working application. Uh, by way of comparison, I have here, I happen to have here a, a similar notebook with uh, the same application uh, done with pure CQL. And it's nothing uh, extremely verbose, but still, you remember the one line to create the vector store? That's it, here. So it starts here, if you do CQL, and it goes all the way here. I'm sure everyone in this room is, has no trouble doing that, but again, try to put the head uh, uh, on of someone new to Cassandra. This is a big difference. This fosters adoption, you know? Um, and besides, it, uh, it already packs the best practices in a sense. It will, it will do prepare statements, it will do optimization, it will take care of uh, all of the right schema, and let's say it makes it more difficult to, to shoot you in, in the foot. Um, and the same for when you run the search. So again, this is where you insert, again, some SQL that might scare people away. Um, this is where I do the search and so on. So this is somehow, so Casayo is, is, has a mission of trying to get, uh, trying to hide away what is avoidable in a, at least in a first interaction with Cassandra while keeping the goodies. Uh, so Casayo is more than just a vector store abstraction. It's actually a family of tables um, which from a Gen AI perspective, look like vector store, chat memory, LLM cache, so very specific and whose purpose is specific to individual uh, typical needs of Gen AI application. But actually, what Casayo does is a more abstract kind of thing. So Casayo is offering abstractions for a table with a vector, a table with metadata support, searchable metadata support, a table which is just a key value store, and so on. Um, and then you can use them for Gen AI purposes or anything actually. So there's nothing specific to language, there's nothing specific to uh, Gen AI actually in, in Casayo. Indeed, the principle are just to show no CQL unless it's necessary and use the best practices in Cassandra but trying to avoid showing them to the user unless it's necessary again because Gen AI people don't have time to, they don't like boilerplate like many. <laughs> they don't have time to learn a new, uh, language like CQL, if they can avoid that. And they might like to, to see their Gen AI language being used in, 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 in the API. Um, but still, we don't want to compromise the good, uh, the, the best uh, features of Cassandra for that. So we still expose partitioning, we expose TTL, we use prepare statements and, and whatnot. 
Um, okay, so how long do I have? I might spend a bit, yeah, okay. I should be able to spend some time in, in a bit of dive into how CASIO is structured. So there are basically uh, three big modules. One is, uh, I, I'm, starting, I'm starting from the ones on, on the right. So there, are, uh, there is a, um, a logic to easily read from several tables at once, doing a client-side join to fill a prompt, typically. So it's a very typical task in, in a prompt-based uh, LLM application that you, you read from, let's say, you read from, you want to, try to convert a set of primary keys into the actual values you stuff in the prompt, from user ID to name, surname, and date of uh, birth, okay? uh, something like that. So this is a one line to do that. And then there is a config module to easily configure the, your session before you start using Casio without having to specify it, it, it anymore. But the, the biggest part is what you see on the left here. And that's uh, a tree of classes built on a base, class, uh, a base table class, which act like a mixing. So you can mix and match your classes and create uh, the, the abstraction for your table that suits your needs, no, no more, no less. So you want metadata or not? You want uh, clustering? You want uh, vector support? You can just mix your, these mixings and it, you will get a table that works. Um, and this is based on a tower of methods that might optionally do something and defer to the higher method in, in the hierarchy. So let's say the vector table that you have seen in the demo is this metadata vector Cassandra table on the upper uh, right. And that's a base table with vector on top, with metadata on top. So every time you run something like a, an ANN query, you see this second line in, in the yellow block, um, there is the ANN search in the vector mixing, which asks the metadata uh, layer to handle some of the input arguments to make them into the where clause. And then the thing goes back to the vector support, which runs the query, and then again, so every method, every data input and output go, goes through all the layers, which potentially might have something to say in, in, in it or not. So this is how you can get full composability of these abstractions. Um, so where is Cassio used right now? You probably have heard of Langchain and Llama Index. These are the two most used uh, frameworks to, to, to write applications with LLMs. Uh, they are, their support for Cassandra uh, in both cases is uh, built on top of Casio. And even though users would not see Casio directly, uh, the, the rationale behind is that there are so many patterns that are best captured once in Casio, and then the, the, the integrations for Langchain and Lama Index are just thin wrappers specific to the idioms of, Casio, of, of Langchain and Lama Index, we just defer for the bulk of managing the table to Casio. So which opens the way to easy integrations with more frameworks. Not only that, but uh, there is even a legitimate usage of Casio itself because not everything is language. We, I, I keep forgetting that, but you might have needs for vector search even outside of language, right? So sound similarity, image similarity. You just go straight to Casio and you have your ready-made methods to use. Uh, like you saw in the demo. Again, easier than, than doing all the CQL. So uh, the project is evolving. Uh, we hope to have 02 out very soon. And uh, yeah, you, you can see here the features that are being uh, added at various stages now. Uh, I invite you to go to casio.org for quick starts, docs, tutorials, and everything. And of course, it's an open source project and we welcome contributions and, P and issues and everything. Um, I close by reminding you that uh, if you prefer to work with a cloud uh, database built on Cassandra, we have AstraDB, of course, and Caseo is, has a first-class support for that as well through a very easy uh, authentication uh, method. So you are invited to try it again and I think I can stop here and I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any question? Uh, sorry, there is one there.
Yes. Uh, <laughs> his talk. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, Casio is, is Python specific. That was built out of the need of uh, um, offering something to Python practitioners. Uh, there might be, of course, I, the same could can be built in different languages, but as things are now, that would be a, 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 an undertaking from scratch. Um, but see Jeff's talk later today at five, right? Yeah, 450. 450. <laughs> that, there is a very enticing way to cut the shortcut and get to the point of multi-language support. Uh, you had a question? No, okay. It's okay? Okay, thank you.